Well, hi everybody, Stu, AG6AG, and today I'm going to show you how to put a UHF connector on the end of RG213, LMR400, uh, G, RG8, not 8X, uh, and any other 0.400 diameter coax that's out there, okay? Uh, we're going to use a crimp connector, and there's some interesting surprises for me in this one as well. So uh, I hope you enjoy it, okay? So, oh, hey, do me a favor, please. If you think of it, click on the subscribe button down below if you haven't already, and click that notify icon so you get notified when I come out with new uh, and improved videos. Also, Hey, if you like my videos, click like, will ya? And any questions, comments, whatever, make them in the comments section down below. I try to get questions answered within a day or two, okay? Anyway, with all that, let's go take a look at putting on a PL239, better known as a UHF connector, on your RG213 coax. All right, well, I was recently working moving this coax from one place to another. Um, it goes out to one of the antennas at the shack, and I noticed that the actual crimped connector on it was spinning on the physical coax, not just, you know, this, but the entire coax connector. So, we're going to go ahead and replace it. Now, today we're going to be using a crimp coax connector. Um, there's all sorts of arguments, crimp versus solder. I actually believe that uh, under normal circumstances, where the coax isn't being twisted and flexed and everything else, solder is the best choice. However, um, this particular piece of coax is very difficult for me to get to. I prefer to solder in a uh, pristine environment, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and put a crimp connector on this today. Um, so, with all great projects, it starts with a little bit of destruction. So here we go. Now I gotta fix it. All right, so I've pretty much got this little gem completely disassembled, right? And I have my heat shrink right here, and I need to make sure I get all of this on my coax. So heat shrink first, then I'll take the crimp collar, um, and then I'll take this, and we're just going to shove this all down back here, and then I'm going to size for this. And I want to take off the outer shield all the way to here, including the coax, right? All the way to about there. So, I'm going to start by using my X-Acto knife here. Actually, this is more of a razor knife. And... This coax is very, very difficult to work with. I'm not really sure where I got it. Um, I'm thinking that I might have gotten it um, because I can't turn it. It literally won't let me turn it. I'm fighting this all the way just trying to get this outer shield off, right? And there is a spot right there that I just need to do this with. Right? Let's see. Am I going to... And now I'm going to... Put this right down the center, like that. And there I go. Although I do have to pull that little piece of metal out of my finger I just wedged in there. But there that is. With all of that in there, we're going to toss that away. 
And now I also need to remove this metal shield, which it looks like we've got mostly cut for the most part. So I'm just going to pop that down like that and see what I can get here. Now, interestingly enough, right? This is really stuck together. And this is probably not the right coax to show this on, but, well, here, we're getting it to move a little, though. There we are. Okay. All right. So, wow. That was a lot of work. Now we're going to grab a little trimmer here. I got a little bit of stuff coming off the side here. And I'm just going to kind of clean that up just a bit. Now, the next thing I have to do is remove only this outer section. I want to leave the metal section there. So I'm going to look and I'm going to take it back to about there. Okay. Anyway, that's the goal. And this is, I'm just very lightly doing this. So I only want to get that outer, outer plastic, right? They make tools for this, by the way, if you're interested in the tool. I have a, I have a lot of problems with the tools. Um, they seem to cut more or cut less than I want them to most of the time. So, I like using a razor knife. That said, you know, this is also a way to get hurt, so you want to be careful with it. And, again, this coax is awful. It truly is. I'm having a very difficult time muscling it around, and I, I shouldn't be. We want to also now kind of just graze this a little. Okay, see if we can. There we go. All right. So will you look at that? Boy, that was a lot of work, wasn't it? I will never, ever buy this kind of coax again. Yeah. Although, I don't even know what kind of coax it was, so <laughs> probably something so extremely cheap that it leaves me with this problem. Now, I need to clean up this section right here. I don't know if you can see it, but that is kind of offset just a little bit to where I think it's going to give me trouble, so I want to cut it, and I got a little, there we go, upstart there, all right, so now I gingerly attempt to put this on, and I want to make sure, though, that all the shield and everything, right, is coming up over the top here, just like that, all right, now, once I have that in place, I want to look, and that looks, that looks pretty good. I got my center conductor out, and this is flowing pretty well. Let's see how this goes on here. All right. Well, supposedly, I'm ready to crimp. So, I get out my crimpers, and it's going to be this center crimp spot right here. And I'm going to line it up like so and apply, oops, I want to apply pressure to that like that with my little thumbnail to the collar, slide it all the way up forward and there 
and there it is. Now, pull, squeeze, wiggle, everything looks good. All right, so now we get to the fun part. The end, we need to solder it. Let's jump to that. All right, so now we're gonna see if we can get this soldered with this dinosaur of a soldering iron that I have here. Um, it's the one that I keep at the house just for such an emergency and we're just going to see if we can get enough heat transfer on this piece of coax here to get it to solder. Right? That's what we're looking at doing. At this point I tightened up the soldering gun tip and went to a uh, lower temperature solder to make this happen. Uh, the real problem was that the soldering gun tip was too loose. So, back to the video. All right, so we're gonna trash this solder. We're gonna go to some other solder I had sitting here. This should actually work a little better, I'm hoping. Okay, we're getting somewhere with it. Uh, now I need to get on the other side. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna do this just to see if I can make this work a little bit. Cause man, it is fighting me tooth and nail here. Let's see. And I don't know if it's a great camera angle for you, but. I'm at the point now where I got to kind of see what I'm doing, so I'm going to be a little probably less uh, worried about the shot angle here, and I apologize. I know you're, you're here to watch it solder, right? So there that is. Okay, we got a little excess there, so we're going to heat, heat it up and try to get it down inside, and then we're just going to take and do this. Let's see if that gives me the clearance that I need. Yeah, I'm going to have to clean that up a little, but I think that's going to be not too bad. I'm going to move this soldering iron out of the way. Take this off, just using it to hold the coax anyway. And what I want to do is I want to do my initial cut here to remove the excess coax end right there and that gives me a better look at I probably want to trim that a little right there let's trim it a little like so all I'm trying to do is just get it so it's gonna fit back properly that actually looks pretty good. I think I about got it. There's just that little edge right there. It's bothering me just slightly. And again, has a lot to do with the soldering iron I'm using, so I just got to accept that to get that center on there. And there we go. All right, so... Let's get the rest of our stuff together here. Clean off the tip of the soldering iron, like so. There that is. Try to dry it off a little. It is still very hot, so I need to be careful. <laughs> I go, I need an old sponge, honey. She will take the one out of the sink. I said, so you don't ever need that back? She says, no. So uh, this is uh, now mine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm going to move some stuff around so uh, some of this hotter stuff is put away and not dangerous anymore, and uh, we'll go into finishing the last portion of this and then testing it. All right, so now we're going to slide this up here and get it screwed all the way up like so. Now we're going to take the heat shrink and we're going to bring it and we're going to bring it as high as we possibly can, right? Right up against the back of that. 
and I am going to get my handy dandy keep away from what I'm setting on fire lighter although I am sitting here holding the other side and we are just going to shrink this all up like so look at that Just like that. And bada bing bada boom. Brand new end. Now one of the reasons that I think this thing was spinning on me is because of the lack of flexibility of this coax. And let's see if we can quickly identify the coax without wasting a bunch of time. Typically there is writing on the coax. I'm going to do that out of shot I think and see what I can find on this or maybe I can search all my sales records and figure that out but I'll try to have an answer at the end of the video oh one more thing of course we do have to do is I've got to test this how am I going to do that I'm going to do it with my VNA so I'll show you how I do that real quick all right so let's get started on the VNA here I'm going to have to calibrate it so first let me turn it on and I'm going to check this from, uh, oh, let's do, let's see, what do I actually have that's saved? We're going to go ahead and click on recall. Uh, let's do, um, all right, let's do 15 to 30 just as a test. And let's go ahead and select calibrate. I'm going to reset the calibration, reset range. Now click on calibrate. It wants me uh, to check for open, so we'll click open. It has now calibrated, open. It wants a short. This is a special short cable, I can tell, or a short tip because I can tell it has a center conductor on it. It's not open. And I can select short, like so. Now it wants a load, and that is simply a 50 ohm load, right? So let's grab that. There we go. There's a little 50 ohm dummy load. And I can go ahead and say yes to load. Now it wants isolation, which means it wants another 50 ohm load over here. Technically, I could have just stopped there, because uh, all I'm going to check is SWR. But I'm going to go ahead and do a complete calibration on this just for, well, just because. That's kind of the way I work. Never know when I might be in a super big hurry and I just say, oh, it was calibrated good last time. I'm just going to not bother to recalibrate it and try to do something and it won't be really completely calibrated. So... Uh, we'll select through. Now what we're actually, the reason that we're doing the isolation and through, uh, let me select done and we'll put this down on, yeah, we'll put it down on six. All right. The reason that I select through is because um, if I was testing for dB loss, I could hook uh, something in uh, S11 and something in um, S21, actually it's S11 and S21, and I could pass the data through it. All right, we're going to go ahead and fasten this up onto the antenna, just like so. And let's pull up our, let's get our uh, display and let's look at our scale our scale dev will make 0 0.5 enter then I want to take and show grid values so look at that 
I am now between one. Oh, it's hard to see, isn't it? It's between one and one point. I'm under 1.5 all the way across. Uh, so I'd say this is a successful installation. I'll wiggle it. Everything seems fine. So we're going to run with that. That's how you put a crimp end on a piece of, uh, let's just say RG213, but there's no way this is RG213. Um, traditional, the old guys will say that's RG8. But I'm going to look up and see if I can figure out what coax this is. And I'm going to let you know uh, during the uh, ending monologue. So thank you very much. Any questions, you know to make the comment down, make a comment down below with your question and I'll try to answer it as quickly as possible. Thanks again. Well, okay, as promised, I'll tell you what that coax was. Uh, it was actually uh, RG213 slash U, uh, which means it's UV rated. It uh, had a military standard of uh, MIL-C-17-74. It had a Teflon dielectric solid core center conductor, and it also was double shielded with a PVC outer insulation. What that means in simple English is it probably wasn't something that I want to use inside the shack. Uh, it is a very robust piece of coax. And I was probably right in the fact that using it in the shack with bends and uh, things like that and connecting and disconnecting and twisting on this coax end and trying to make it twist to my will to get on something is probably what basically eventually destroyed that connector. So live and learn. Absolutely marvelous coax. However, uh, probably not designed for the use that I'm using it for. And, you know, to top it all off, it was a lousy choice to demonstrate putting a connector on for you with. But you got to see it, and you got to see how hard it can be sometimes. So, hey, with that, I hope you got something out of this. I tell you, I sure learned a lesson or two myself. And uh, any questions or comments, make them down below. And if you like what I do, please subscribe and uh, click that notify icon and you'll be notified whenever I come out with a new video. Anyway, with all that, this is Stu, AG6AG, saying 73 and hope to hear you out there on the air.